Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for another great and wonderful opportunity to study your word together. We shall all be blessed, even as we gather together to worship you, to praise you, to bless you, wherever we may be. Use these words, far and near, to bring forth liberty, to bring forth freedom, to bring forth praise unto your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. This is the continuation of our teachings on Sundays that has to do with the authority of man on the earth. The authority of man on the earth. We have been looking at uh, the purpose of God in putting man here. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, we discover that one of the purposes of God in putting man here is for man to exercise dominion and rule and reign over the affairs of this world. One of the reasons why God put us here is so that we will be in charge of the earth. That is one of the reasons why we are here. Now, we've been talking about the fact that we can divide our lines of authority into two. You know, when you have the map, or the graph rather, you have the Y axis and you have the X axis. We can say that the line of authority that we are expected to exercise on the earth can be divided into two. Number one, the authority that we have because we are men. Sincerely, everyone, you will realize that I've been emphasizing this over and over and over. And the simple reason is this. Unfortunately for us as believers, we have not delved much into that. The unbelievers, because they don't have other option, they have delved more into that. Consider the richest people on the earth. Majority of them are unbelievers. Majority of them, they are unbelievers. They have, we, we have not really taken so much time to study the fact that we are actually meant to reign on the earth. So this is how it is. When God made this world, he didn't make it for born-again Christian. He made it for every human being. We only need to understand the principle by which to govern this world. Then we start enjoying it. God didn't make this world for born-again Christian or people that spent all their time on the mountain to pray. That's not, those are not the ones that he made this world for. So originally, initially, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, which was not written about born-again Christian, it was written about every human being. Come, let us make man our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Let them be in charge. That is God's original plan. But listen to this, and this is where we are going today. God didn't plan that man will fall. Now, I, I know there are a lot of questions that can be raised along that line. But God knows everything. Let me tell you something about God. God knows everything. And this also affects the way he made things. When God made man, he made man in such a way that we have, we have free will. We can exercise our will and he's not going to impose his own on it. When you see a man that wants to override the will of another man, that is witchcraft. God doesn't exert his own influence over the will of man. He made us to be free agents, moral agents. That is, we have a choice, we can make decisions, we can do and undo. That is why it is difficult to predict what man will do. Yes, God knows everything, <clears throat> but in his knowing everything, in the nature of by which he made man, he has incorporated something into man, and it is this. Man can do and undo. Man doesn't need to follow me. He has a choice, and I'm not going to tailor monitor, curtail, restrict his choice. Since God made us like that, he, though he knows the future, he still made us in such a way that we can surprise him. Let me put it simply like that. What do I mean by that? Because he will not monitor our will. You must have had people that say things like, I didn't have a choice, I have to obey God. No, you have a choice. You have a choice. Whenever you say you don't have a choice, that's your choice. Listen to that. 
Whenever you say you don't have a choice, that's your choice. You chose not to have a choice. It's not that you don't have a choice. You just chose not to have a choice. The choice is in man's hand. That's how he made man. So originally he didn't plan it that man will fall. He didn't expect man to fall. Why? Because it was not only wrong, it was unintelligent. How can a complete stranger come to the garden and he was able to lure you from the blessings, from the peace, from the joy that you have been enjoying for donkey years? It doesn't make sense. God didn't expect that. It was a strange thing. So he didn't plan that. What does that mean, Pastor? Now this is what that means. That means that the authority that man has as human being is what man ought to use if all things are equal. It is only when we have an exception to the rule that we should switch to the second level of authority. Hmm. Let me say that again. <clears throat> Ordinarily, when God made man and he made this world, he made this world in such a way that man is expected to reign and to rule on this earth. That was his plan. That was what he did. That was what he had in mind. God planned that man rules on this earth. It was the emergency of the fall of man that tweeted things. That is what made Satan come into the calculation. You notice what the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let me explain what I just said. Sincerely, what I just said is the summary of our teachings today. Just follow me step by step. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. The Bible says, but even if our gospel is veiled, I'm, I'm reading the New King James Version, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine unto them. The Bible talks about the minds of the God, whose minds the God of this age. When he's talking about the God of this age, he's talking about the God of this world. No, that couldn't be the God, our Father, because God, our Father, will not blind the minds of those who believe in Christ. So he's talking about the devil. In other words, he's referring to the devil as the God of this world. When God made this world, he didn't put Satan into calculation. So man was expected to reign and rule as ordinary human being. But when there was the emergency, Satan came in. He became the god of this world. That is what necessitated the second level of authority. That is, if not that there is the devil on this earth, we don't need to use any other authority because we are sons of God. That ordinary authority as human beings will go a long way. But because of the fall of man, because Satan became included in the calculation. When Adam obeyed Satan, what was the implication? One of the implications is this. Satan was able to enter into this world with his own peculiar anointing. He brought in evil anointing. He brought in death, reduction. He brought in calamity, sickness and diseases. They were not in the plan of God before. I remember somebody one day was asking me, Pastor, I don't understand what God could be teaching me with this sickness. I said, no, 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 no. God doesn't teach nobody with sickness. Moreover, it is when you have minor sickness like a dick that you are thinking God, <laughs> maybe God is teaching you. You better don't say that or when you have someone that they hung both of his legs in the hospital. You will find out that people with only hands can still kill. They kill you. <laughs> no, 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 no. God doesn't teach nobody with sickness. He doesn't have. Satan brought all that in. Originally, man was expected to reign and rule. Let me ask you a question. If Adam had wanted to hit a lion, how would he have gotten a lion? No, he didn't need a gun. He was to reign by spoken words. He was to command lions to come. Everything that God made, he subjected them to man <clears> through spoken words. I remember when we were in secondary school, Mrs. Bangbade was our English teacher. I remember she taught us something. She said, 
they don't you don't repeat things in english tautology or whatever you called it and then uh, when we go to our church in town our fellowship our church in town our pastor told us if you want to know how to speak english be reading your bible so i was i was now in between because i started reading from genesis chapter one and mrs bangwadi told us you don't repeat things in english genesis chapter one is about repeating things and god said and god said and god said and our pastor said if you read english bible <coughs> you will be better with english uh, uh, speaking english so there was a conflicting thing I now later find out that it's not that God doesn't understand the rule of English. What happened is this. God needed to emphasize speaking. Because that was what he had in mind for man to reign on the earth. God's power is conveyed in spoken words. Man's power is conveyed in spoken words. The way God made us is that we... we do you notice that you don't do anything without saying it first? That is how God made this world. That is the way, the primary way to exercise authority, ordinary authority as human being here. But when Satan was included in the equation, after Adam and Eve had obeyed the devil and he came into this world, something else came up. And this is this. Satan introduced negative things to this world. Things started getting rotten. Burden came in. Destruction came in. So what is God's antidote? What God did is that he introduced another level of authority. Originally, man, God made man to reign here. There was no problem. Along the line, man entertained Satan. Satan became the God of this world. Man now needed another level of authority. That is what got us that's what makes necessary the fact that we are now children of God. That is what God did. He introduced this second level of authority to checkmate the devil. So this is it. A whole lot of things that happen on this earth are not necessarily spiritual. Somebody asked me the other day, he was talking, I think one of the Bible school students, asking some questions that are Something like, uh, should I, will God prefer that I buy a yellow car or green car? I said, no, 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 those ones are not under God. It is man's choice. A whole lot of things on earth, in fact, 70%, they are man's thing, 80%. Why? Because originally, God just made man to put everything under control and to be in charge. That was his plan originally. It was when the fall of man came in that Satan got introduced into this world. Is the introduction of the devil that brought in the necessity for another level of authority, which is the authority that we now have as children of God. That is, it is specifically to checkmate the intrusion of the devil in the natural affairs of life. Majority of what happens in the natural affairs of life are also are simply under that first level of authority. This is why I talked about marriage. This is why I talk about finance, leadership. Do you notice something that the most or the largest ministries on earth are not necessarily the most anointed? They are more like the most organized. Look at this issue of coronavirus. Can you see the effect that uh, Christ Embassy is having under Reverend Chris Oyakilume? Because they've invested a lot in the natural side of life. And when situation like this happens, you realize that that is more needed than the spiritual, so to say, side. Like I was explaining last week about some people that came up and said that Science seems to be prevailing. No, 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 no. It's the same God that is be for both. Science is the first level of authority. But this other second level of authority is actually intended to handle the effect that the fall of man brought in. <coughs> 
that is the second level of authority that spiritual authority is to say okay this thing was meant to be like this satan came here and wanted to twist it satan i command you to be removed this is why jesus said something very interesting very illuminating look at something that happened in matthew chapter 8 let me show you something in matthew chapter 8 there was this case of the centurion oh there are a lot of things we can learn from the statement of that centurion verse 5 now when jesus had entered capernaum a centurion came to him pleading with him saying lord my servant is lying at home paralyzed dreadfully tormented and jesus said unto him i'll come and heal him the centurion answered and said lord i'm not worthy that thou should have come under my roof but only speak a word and my servant will be healed for i also am a man under authority having soldiers under me and i say to this one go and he goes to another come and he comes and to my servant do this and he does it that man here is explaining the way the authority he has works he said i'm a man under authority figuratively think like this think of this man saying i'm a man under the first level of authority this is how i use it <coughs> i ask to one i ask one to go and he goes i ask another to come and he comes master i know you have another level of authority you also can ask sickness to go by that sickness that man means something what the man is saying is this i use my authority to other men around you have authority over what is against men so it is like this the authority that we have as human beings is meant for us to keep living here on earth it is when we see something that is against man that we switch to the second authority it is that that we switch look at it like this if you're doing business and you are hoeing and you are hoeing you should sit down put all the necessary steps put all the necessary things orderliness plans on earth into place if your business is not moving sit down think and analyze it very well it is after you have done all that is necessary all that should make it to move from the perspective of nature and you fail that you will start thinking for example as long as a man jumps up and comes down we don't need the second level of authority why because it is following the order of life when we need the second level of authority is when a man jumps up and fails to come down something has come in something has stopped it that is when we swing to the second level of authority we have authority here on earth that authority that we have from god because we are born again christian he is specifically designed to checkmate the intrusion of the devil in the affairs of life that authority is to checkmate the intrusion of the devil you know somebody was asking me a question the other day and said pastor you see you look, look, look at what is happening now men with science they are winning men of god they are hiding i said no 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 go and sit down just, just go and sit down you need to understand what is expected you know a whole lot of people they come around and say uh, churches should be doing roads church it's not a wrong thing for the churches to be doing road but that's not our primary job it's the job of the government it's the job of the government it's a shame for the government to be calling churches to do roads they are expected to they don't do that anywhere in the world no it's their job for the simple reason that do we call them to help us cast out the devils no the issue is this when it comes to casting out of the devil that is under that second authority you know that's an intrusion of the devil so what i'm saying is this unless you have peculiar problem pastor what do you mean by peculiar problem a problem that is connected with the uh, involvement of the devil or that comes up as a result of the fall of man 
that is when we may need to beckon to the second level of authority. Because that authority actually is designed to take control over what is against men. The second authority that we have is meant to handle what is against men. When it comes to organization, when it comes to man's welfare, we only need to be human beings to do that. It is when in the course of running as human beings, we are now challenged by evil spirit, in quote. We are now challenged by the system that was brought in by the devil because he's the God of this world. That is when we now wake up and say, no, we have another level of authority. Satan, we ask you to remove your hand. Let me use an example of church growth. L listen to this. You can stay in the mountain forever. I'm praying that God should increase your church. It doesn't work like that. Do you know when God wants to increase that church, what he will tell you? He will give you the strategy you will use on earth. It will come down to the first level that you have as human being. I run Bible school, and sometimes I call those Bible school students and I tell them, I said, some of you are praying that God will bring millionaires to your churches. You have your roof leaking. This is raining season. You will now say, all those millionaires, they don't have love of God. They have love of God. You just don't know. A millionaire doesn't want to come and sit down with the roof leaking. You need to do the natural side first. Those ones have nothing to do with the demons. That's why you can go to the mountain and pray forever. You are using the authority that is designed to handle what is against man, to propel man's progress. Propelling man's progress is simply under the authority that God gave us as human beings. It is in the course of our development, in the course of our growth, when we are now challenged by a negative force, that is when we need evil, uh, the second level of authority that we have as believers to checkmate that. That is when we need that. I, 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 and the beauty of it is this. There are a lot of things. Let me use the example of this coronavirus. Number one, God has really helped us. That he slowed it down before it could enter Africa. You can imagine if, as it started in China, it started in Nigeria. How many people will remain now? But you see, it was slowed down. That one is not just uh, uh, um, the authority that we have as human beings. But do you notice an interesting thing? With this sit down at home, everybody be in your house, you can also approach the same result from the natural perspective. That is, God in his infinite mercy and power and influence, he supernaturally helped us to slow it down. But man also can achieve something like that by following the rules. When man violates the rules now, they say, sit down at home. People are not sitting down at home. This is one of the things that now call for the second level of authority. Many times, now if you have the spare tire in your vehicle, and you have the jack, and you maintain speed limit, if all things are equal, you will not need to have flat tire and start praying in tongues. You will not need to come to church and say that, God supernaturally helped me before God finished on the road. So many times when we have that kind of testimony, it's because we fulfill to operate in the first level of authority. So it is often when we fail to do what we ought to do from the perspective of the first level of authority that we come up and become stranded and now come up with testimony. Let's operate that. So it is this, to live well, to live ordinary life. You only need to be human being. It is when there is a challenge on the ordinary course of life that you use the authority that you have as believers. We are now going to dwell on that authority, our second level of authority, when we have our teachings next week. I hope you understand very well. So it is this, live very well as human being. When you now have challenges or things coming against that livelihood, that is when you swing to the authority that we have in Christ Jesus. That is why you know that you can live well just being human being. So see you again next uh, week.